All right, guys. I'm, it's been a while since I kind of did a debrief on jigs, but I'm just going to kind of talk about the colors I use whenever I like them, and also a new jig that I've kind of talked about a few times in videos that is going to come out very, very soon. But number one, the color that started it all is Donk really really good bluegill color you know it's got some some light muted down chartreuse in it it's got some green pumpkin with some blue glimmer on it then it's got some really good contrast right there in the front that you can tell i'm really big on contrast in jigs kind of in all baits really i feel like whenever you look at bait fish there's a really definite contrast between their back and their belly you can see a different color so a lot of times i really like for a jig to to have kind of layers to it and have that contrast. I feel like it looks a little bit more natural, but obviously the Donk, really, really popular color from the people that fish with Untamed Tackle Jigs. This is the one that started though. On Gunnersville, my rookie year, I caught like 19 pounds the first day and four of them or maybe five of them were on that jig. You know, it was actually a prototype at that point in time, but one of my favorite colors without a doubt. Usually use a green pumpkin trailer, something around that green pumpkin. I've used watermelon some, but green pumpkin is a really good standard for that. Another really, really good one is black and blue. This right here happens to be black and blue smoke, actually. So you can see that's just kind of a tried and true standard color jig. You know, like that's one that kind of everybody throws, you know, and there's a good reason for it. It catches really, really big ones. When that light penetration is less in the winter, it's a really, really good color. And then anytime you're around grass, vegetation, it's a really good color because that bait darkens up. And then also, you know, when the water's muddy, Everybody thinks to go black and blue, and that's that's a really good standard because they can see it from a little bit further. It looks like a shadow in the water, and you know, visibility two foot or less. Black and blue is definitely going to be the standard, but it's also a really really good color whenever it's cold and that light penetration is less. Catch some really really big ones. Another really good one is dirty crawl. This right here is dirty crawl. You know, it just looks like a crawfish. It's got some muted down orange in it. It's got some black to darken it up, and then it's obviously got some green pumpkin in it. You know, just to give it that natural look with a little bit of contrast to make it darker, and then some contrast to give it a little bit of orange to make it look a little bit more like a crawfish. But it's not a it's not a bright orange. As you can see, it's really a muted down orange. Like it, it's enough where you can see it and the fish can see it, but it's kind of muted down and not overbearing. And I like that because I like my stuff to look a little bit more natural all the time in the water. So those are the three. All those have a pretty stout weed guard. You know, I can flip that jig. I can skip it under docks that are, that are you know, have a lot of brush under them. Skip it under docks have a lot of cross crossbars and cross members. You know, that there's other jigs I've used in the past where I'd have to have a jig tied up for skipping under floating docks. And I'd have to have a jig tied up for skipping under, you know, gnarly docks with brush because... That wasn't a really good hybrid for both, you know, and this is a really, really good middle of the road jig. You kind of do anything you want to with it. So the setup I'm going to use for these, seven foot three, medium heavy, extra fast Muse from 13 Fishing. That's the rod that I use now for skipping a jig all the time. I actually, a couple weeks ago, I put it, I put it on a seven one medium heavy Muse and I was like, a seven one, I'll be able to cast it even better. And fished a tournament with a couple buddies that weekend. Fished one on Saturday, one on Sunday. And I couldn't cast. I couldn't cast it. It's just years and years of me throwing a 7 foot 3 medium heavy. That just, I couldn't get over it quickly and go back down to a shorter rod. So it's really just what you're used to. Anything from a 6.6 six up to a 7.6 six is going to be fine. A 7.6 six gets a little bit cumbersome to skip a jig with. But that 7.3... Is, is the sweet spot for me because of how many years I've got throwing it. You know, it's kind of going to be a personal preference for you. But the 7.3 medium heavy extra fast Muse, 8.3 to 1 gear ratio reel is a must have. The more cast you can make in a day, the better. And my standard is anything that I work with the rod, I use an 8.3 to 1 gear ratio reel. Anything that I work with the reel, you know, vibrating jigs, chatter baits, spinner baits, crank baits, I go to a 7.5 to 1 or a 6.8 to 1 for those. You know, anything that I work with the reel, slower reel, Anything I work with the rod, faster reel, because then you're just reeling up slack, and then you're reeling up to make a new presentation. So that's kind of my standard. 20-pound Sunline Shooter fluorocarbon. That's going to be the, the gold standard for me for jig fishing. If I'm around super, super gnarly docks, I'm going to go up to 22. If I'm around nothing but straight floating docks that are not bad at all, sometimes in crystal clear water, I'll go down to 18 or even 16. But for the most part, that 20 is going to be the gold standard for me. So... As far as trailers go, you know, there's a couple different styles that I'll use. 
I'll use a, a, a big a big one whenever I want to flip, you know, whenever we have draw down lakes that there's not much cover left in the water. I'm going to typically go with a bigger, bulkier profile because I feel like it gets bigger bites and I'm not trying to fish as fast because there's less cover in the water. When there's a lot of cover in the water and I want to be more efficient, I go to a smaller, more slender style profile bait. But recently, for whatever reason, it has seemed like this cleanup crawl from Crust City has just gotten more bites. I went and filmed a video the other day, and y'all probably seen that video, where I was skipping a jig and I was using the cleanup crawl, which is a really, really good trailer. And I caught them really good on it. In like two hours, I caught four or five fish on it. Which skipping a jig under docks is typically a grind. Like it typically is what it is. It's more of a grindy type of a profile of, of a presentation you know so I'm gonna rig this up with a cleanup crawl and I went back and fished a tournament like two days later and I wasn't that smart and I actually forgot the cleanup crawls so I caught like a fish on it quickly then I lost one of the legs off of it so I had to use a regular chunk style trailer and I actually only caught like one more bass all day skipping a jig under dock so I went for two hours with this setup and I caught four or five and I went for like six hours with a regular chunk and didn't catch them near as good so you can see that right there that's the cleanup crawl on the back of a jig you cut it down pretty small and make a small profile has a really good wide surface for skipping makes it a phenomenal skipping trailer and then a really consistent action which i like because when i skip that jig under a dock I want to know what my bait is doing at all times. I use a chunk style trailer. I use a chunk style trailer a lot when it gets cold, but it's kind of one you got to babysit. Like the, the, the leg on it will get flipped over the hook a lot, especially if you do it like I do it. And I, I like to thread it to make it a little bit smaller profile. The trailer will get actually twisted around itself a good bit. This bait seems to not do that at all. Like it seems to, the legs very rarely get around the hook or anything like that, but it's just a really good, consistent jig trailer that I've been catching them really, really, really good on this year. So that's kind of the setup that I use. And you can kind of see the difference in the two. One's a chunk style, one's a, you know, clean up crawl style. This bait has almost no action at all. This bait has a ton of action. And it seemed like the more action has played a little bit better, you know, in, in the past two or three weeks. So definitely have been experimenting with it back and forth though. You know, that's just kind of how I am. Whenever I got line coming out, I guess that's on a dang spool. I was wondering what that was. I thought it was trash line, but I guess it's my leader line out of, out of my center box. So, I, but I always, the way that I am when I fun fish, I always play with baits and try to figure out if one is actually better than the other, you know, because a lot of times if you throw by an aggressive one, he's just going to bite. But that's not always the case. Sometimes there's little nuances to these baits that make the fish actually trigger. And this is a setup that I've been using recently is with the cleanup crawl. So definitely something worth checking out. They're in stores now. They're actually available now. All the Crush City baits. I've got a freeloader right here rigged up. All these, all these baits are available right now. They're, they're for sale at some of the major retailers. And that's kind of pretty exciting for us at the Crust City team because they have not been available for a while and everybody's known about them for a while because my boy Wheeler won a pretty decent sized tournament on them. You know, he won them 100 grand this year on Gunnersville and on, on the freeloader and everybody's been wanting them ever since and now they're available so you can get them but you better act fast because I think they're going to sell out pretty fast. But anyways, that's kind of my jig set up. Probably about to go catch one or two on it though. Do you think any tournament, any elite events will be one on a jig this year? Or will it play at all? I don't think so. You don't think so? Mm -mm. I don't think so at all. We, we, just, we just don't have a schedule for it, you know? There's some opens that I see could definitely win on a jig, you know, shallow. And then there's some other tournament schedules like the NPFL. They've got a couple that I think could be one on a jig because the time of the year and the lakes they're going to. But as far as the elites, you know, Fork and toledo a jig can play and, and will play a little but as far as the win i don't see it happening this year i better get the new jig shouldn't i there she is right there new jig from untamed tackle flipping jig really really good head design this one has got the paint absolutely wore off of it. I've thrown this thing a ton. I mean, all over the place too. A lot of lakes around here. 
I actually won a tournament on this on this bait last fall, and it was really cool because it was like as soon as I got them, I painted them myself, took them to a small little local lake about an hour away, and pulled up to a place, and like third cast with it, I call it like a three pounder, and like the tenth cast with it, I call it like a two and a half. It was actually like a three sixty, and then like the tenth cast with it, I call it like a two ninety nine. So that was really cool, and I remember that so vividly because it was like. 10 casts in uh, that I've ever used with this jig. So pretty cool, pretty fun, pretty exciting. We're really happy about it, but that's it. It's gonna be a really good flipping jig. The Ace has a head design that really makes it skip extremely well. And the other jig will skip too, but the Ace skips super, super well. That jig has the head and the lead kind of poured in a way where it falls straight down. Makes it a very efficient flipping jig and also makes it a very good jig for pitching to them whenever we're using forward facing sonar. It falls straight down, it doesn't glide as much. You can get it on those fish really fast. And that's kind of, you need both, you know, over the course of a year. Now, if I'm gonna be skipping boat docks or fishing really, really shallow cover in the bank, the Ace is perfect. Like, it's exactly what I want for that. But flipping super heavy cover and then you know, fishing a little bit deeper. I like for that jig to fall straight down and get down a little bit more fast and a little bit faster and a little more efficiently. So kind of a hole in the lineup that we needed to plug and now it's been plugged and this bait will be out very, very soon. So pretty exciting. Sucker's got a really beefy four alt hook for throwing on a seven foot six heavy, seven foot six medium heavy, 22 pound sunline shooters, the one I've been throwing this on and then flipping it in some gnarly, gnarly stuff and then getting them out. Came in second in a tournament a couple weeks ago and caught a couple of them flipping that jig, a couple really key ones flipping that jig, you know, in, in, in current and in big log jams and stuff like that. So it's really been a player for me and pretty excited to see y'all's reception to it because I think it's a phenomenal flipping jig. But without further ado, what else we got on jigs, Hunter? That's all. Have we covered it? It's all good? All we right. also had a baby. Uh-oh. Why we do that for? <laughs> I was just getting way too much sleep before, you know, so we decided to have a baby and kind of cut down on that a little bit. So we did have a baby. Hunter's holding him right now behind the camera. And he's cute. He is cute. That's all. He's cute and hungry, and that's pretty much all the time. So appreciate it, guys. We're about to go fishing.